Live from Studio A on the Ohlone Fremont campus, this is Ohlone Tri-City News, featuring stories about our neighbors in Fremont, Newark, and Union City. Good evening and welcome to Ohlone Tri-City News for Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. I am Rebecca Twyman and now the news. Over 9,000 people in Alameda County are currently unhoused, according to the survey done by nonprofit organization Every One Home. This survey shows an increase of 22% since 2019, with 16% of the population linking COVID-19 as one of the causes of their homelessness. Union City has had a significant increase of 79% since 2019, while Newark has had a decrease by 35% in their count of unhoused individuals. Every One Home aims to end homelessness in Alameda County by doing thorough surveys every two years. They aim to bring people together with the power of people and data to show what works and how to amplify it to end homelessness. To learn more about 2022's Alameda County report and how you can help end homelessness, go to everyonehome.org slash Maine. The Fremont Police Department hosted its 2022 Public Safety Fair this past Saturday. This event was held next to the Fremont Police Department on Stevenson Boulevard. It informed community members about public safety services and provided information on crime prevention and traffic safety. They provided public forums to chat with police personnel and showcased police vehicles, equipment, and a SWAT vehicle. This event hosted a dunk tank, bike rodeo, and arts and crafts for kids. Tons of giveaways and food trucks were on site. Are you a STEM major looking to join a club here at Ohlone? Ohlone has a renowned STEM club. Here's Aliana with the story. In the science, technology, engineering, and math field, often referred to as STEM, women face challenges as they pursue their passion because of how dominated it is by men. We still face a lot of adversity, especially in the form of microaggressions, which people tend to believe don't exist, but it's more easier to recognize when they're aiming towards you. And this even, like expands to like indirect um, sexism. I've definitely felt kind of a bit like an oddball. Um, I also, you know, developed imposter syndrome. I just kind of compare myself to everyone. Those are the kinds of things that put you down and mm, limit you. Despite those challenges and doubts that women face, they stay positive and motivated. Knowing that I can champion that adversity, it motivates me to continue doing that, to tell other people that they weren't right about their misconceptions about me and other women like me. I'm sure that many other uh, minorities in STEM degrees or pursuing STEM degrees feel the same way. One reason um, that motivates me in STEM would be to help other people. Um, that's definitely one of my passions in life. Ohlone College has a club dedicated to building women's success and presence in STEM, which is the SWE or SWE Club. SWE is the Society of Women Engineers, which is an international initiative. Our goal is to promote diversity and advocacy for women in STEM so that they can reach their full potential within their careers. Each club meeting is eventful and is open-minded to the members and their ideas. During our meetings we plan to do a lot of um, various activities so we plan on doing um, professional development workshops, technical hands-on projects and um, different networking opportunities for students. We can brainstorm for literally every meeting and um, create different ideas for every meeting um, based on recent things we've learned like for example last uh, semester. I had recently learned how to solder and I talked with the president and she was like you should totally teach the rest of the club to solder for our next club meeting. The club has been successful in showcasing their projects but also helping each of the members in different ways. We had so many different projects, um, lots of different um, STEM events on the campus that we were able to um, participate in and promote our club. Um, there was like a STEM summit where we were able to showcase our 3D printers and our, our um, laser cutters. Um, um, and like a robot arm display that we did that we programmed. We like to invite speakers to hold workshops um, speaking on topics such as like uh, choosing the right degree for you, creating a LinkedIn account, career building, and other 
soft skills like that. SWE has had a positive impact on its members, becoming a home and safe space for them. A really big way that like helped me champion through that was joining clubs like these, like SWE and other engineering clubs here um, that promote diversity and inclusion. It makes me feel at home. I'm really grateful for groups like SWE um, that have like a support system for me to rely on other people and um, learn from their experiences and um, just get their insight on how to help me with this kind of thing. Women have high hopes for themselves in the STEM field. My hopes for women in STEM are that they are confident and that they know that they are capable of whatever they set their minds to, um, regardless of their gender or their skill set. My hopes for women in STEM is that one day people can name female engineers as easily as they can name male men in STEM. In the long run, I would really hope to see more women in STEM and the amount of women just kind of exponentially rise. Although a woman is in their name, anyone is welcome to join and have fun. Our club is super cool with really exciting new topics every meeting. Anyone can join. Um, you know, you don't have to be just a woman to join. Um, SWE, um, just if you know you have an interest in STEM or passion in STEM or you would like to advocate for women in STEM, you know, we open our arms to you um, and we welcome and everyone to join. The SWE club anticipates to have their first meeting in October in room 1305. Look out for the club fair for more specific details. From Ohlone College in Fremont, this is Aliana Pasta for Ohlone Tri-City News. Last week, Union City celebrated diversity and different cultures. Stay tuned, the story is coming up after this short break. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out. No answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Jason, let's go see your room. Washington, Washington Hospital will be holding its 14th annual Think Pink Breast Health Awareness event taking place tomorrow, October 13th at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Their experts will be speaking on the latest breast cancer treatment options. If you want to attend, be sure to wear any pink clothes you have to support women's breast cancer research. The event will be held at Washington West 2500 Maori Avenue. Last week, people of Union City celebrated diversity and different cultures. Here's Aliana Pasta with the story. To kickstart this month, the Our Lady of the Rosary Church in Union City had an international festival on Saturday and Sunday, October 1st and 2nd. Both days featured many foods, games, and live performances. Different community members were in attendance, such as the Union City Police Department and Firefighter Service. People were able to learn about their programs and even see the inside of their vehicles. Sunday featured a classic car show and raffle to give back to the community. Aside from the sponsors and their booths, students from James Logan High School helped make the event possible. To see the raffle winners, visit olrchurch.org. You're most likely to be, be, to be successful in all of your classes as a college student by taking one of these classes. Here's Richard with a story. Transitioning from high school to college can be a challenge, but help is available. Personal development really teaches you a lot of basic skills to prepare yourself for being a college student. I think it's kind of an underused resource, actually, because we have great research that shows students who take these classes are more successful in college. My course was one of the online sessions, so I didn't get to be in a classroom setting, but the work that we got to do still allowed us as students to collaborate with each other and learn a lot about just basic needs that college students have, like time management, study skills, and just really some basics that were laid out to kind of get you started at Ohlone and get you competent in your first semester. Ohlone offers up to three kinds of personal development classes that help students no matter how much college experience they have. College success, 
There are some for career success and choosing a career and a path. And there are some um, just for life skills in general. Students are more, more, most likely to be successful in all of their classes as a college student, period. They have higher GPAs and are more likely to be retained and continue on with their college goals. Just learning how to, to do some basic things on, on how to build your confidence as a person and as a student in, in your abilities and what you can offer to the, to the school and to the world. Personal development classes are instructed by counselors. This means you get two in one professor and counselor. Usually when students ask me about the classes, we talk a little bit about what their goals are and, and we see how it might fit into their academic plan or um, what they're hoping to get out of it because they might also be able to get some of the things that we teach in those classes. It's simple to sign up for a personal development class. Talk with the counselor to find out which one is for you. Then go on My Ohlone and register. At least once, one semester is, is very helpful. I highly recommend it to anybody enrolled at Ohlone. A personal development class can be the secret to your success. From the Ohlone College Fremont campus, this is Richard Kim for Ohlone Tri-City News. Let's take a look at this week's entertainment with Brandon. Thanks, Rebecca. After 23 seasons, Blake Shelton is leaving his position at The Voice as a judge. 12 years after appearing on the show, his last season will be premiering in spring of 2023. Shelton made a statement on his Instagram account announcing the departure. For any MCU fans in Fremont, the City of Fremont Recreation Services is holding a Movie Under the Stars event at the Central Park Performance Pavilion. They'll be showing the new Thor Love and Thunder movie this Friday. The event is free, and if you want more details, you can call them at 510-494-4300. The popular anime Bleach is back, titled Bleach, Thousand Year Blood War. The first episode premiered this Monday, and fans can stream the show every Monday at 8.30 p.m. on Hulu. The climactic finale to the new Halloween trilogy, Halloween Ends, releases this Friday. Next Friday, the DC film Black Adam releases. Meanwhile, in the world of TV, the final season of the popular animated show, The Owl House, is premiering this Saturday at 9 p.m. on the Disney Channel. The show, famous for its LGBT representation, was canceled due to the show's progressive themes not fitting with Disney's branding. The episodes were premiered at three 45-minute schedules in specials. Three episodes in the one season. In video games, Gotham Knights released their preview embargo last Wednesday. The game is about Batman's four sidekicks taking over his mantle after his death. As a preview of their games, Warner Brothers Games Montreal invited YouTubers to play the game for two hours across one of the game's side missions involving Harley Quinn. The game releases on October 21st on PC and console. And the trailer for the latest Need for Speed game titled Need for Speed Unbound made on, on October 6th. The game marches a large departure from the realistic art style of the previous games, focusing more on an animated style in street art and graffiti. The game releases on December 2nd on PC and console. Up next, here's the latest scoop on the open mic at the Smith Center. Two weeks ago, Ohlone's Entertainment's Art Guild held their first ever open mic of the semester. Students from across Ohlone came to perform songs and comedic bits. Admission was $5 and funds raised when in support of the guild's activities this semester. The Entertainment's Art Guild plans to hold their next yeah! open mic this Friday on October 14th. Costumes are allowed during the event, but full face masks and weapons are not allowed. If you want to learn more about how you can join the open mic or the guild, you can visit their Instagram page at Lonely Arts Guild and click the link in their bio. On social media, the Try Guys founder Ned Fulmer was ousted from his job in the popular YouTube channel after he admitted to cheating on his wife with an engaged woman. The personality, made famous for his love of his wife, made a statement addressing the scandal on his Twitter and Instagram pages. The three remaining Try Guys released a video statement on YouTube last Monday about the event, which was parried by SNL to much criticism towards the online comedy show. According to online sources, it is rumored that Ned Fulmer had a friend on the SNL Riders crew. That's it for entertainment this week. Back to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Brandon. That open mic looked like a lot of fun. <laughs> Which local city was ranked the best city to live in? Stay tuned. We'll tell you after this break. Last week, Brandon met a girl on a dating app. One day after work, he finally found the courage to ask her out no answer. He started to panic. Was he being too pushy? Maybe it was too... Hey, sorry I didn't respond. I was driving. 
I would love to go on a date. How does tonight sound? Brandon tried to play it cool, but inside he knew. A girl so smart, so responsible. She must be a keeper. Last weekend, we feasted on olives. Join us as we revis revisit the fun-filled annual Olive Festival. Here's Charles with the story. Olives were the featured ingredient of the day, and festival goers tasted olive oil and munched on olive specialty dishes. And for hungry food lovers, there were delicious chicken and ribs, gourmet hot dogs, tasty sandwiches, and Italian ice cream. There were activities for everyone, with live musical entertainment, arts, shopping, crafts, and games. The festival was held behind historic Old Mission San Jose. The annual festival is sponsored by the Mission San Jose Chamber of Commerce. According to an annual ranking of the best places to live, produced by Money.com, Fremont is the best city to live in Northern California. Irvine was the only ci California city that ranked higher. Irvine was ranked 13th while Fremont was ranked 18th in the United States. Their survey looked at many factors including economic opportunities, quality of life, diversity, and many more. Also, according to a national survey done by WalletHub.com, Fremont is the safest city in California and coming in as 17th in the nation. The site surveyed over 180 cities nationwide by using 42 key indicators of safety, including questions on residents who are fully vaccinated, assault rates, unemployment rates, and many more factors to determine where residents feel most secure. Last Friday, Fremont Streets Eats returned to the Downtown Event Center, sponsored by the Fremont Chamber of Commerce in a partnership with the Food Truck Mafia. The event raises money for nonprofits. Each week, there are new food trucks, prizes for attendees, and live entertainment. This, week, this year's bar tips will go to the Fremont Recreation Services Scholarship Fund. Friday, Fremont Streets Eats is held weekly through the end of October. For more information, visit FremontStreetsEats.com. Let's take a look at this week's weather with Armando. All right, well, thank you, Rebecca, for tossing it to me. How are you folks doing this, uh, this fine evening? So. The highs for today's, well, we mainly saw uh, mid-range 70s, uh, lows being in 59 in San Francisco, and the high being 85 and 86 uh, in Dublin and uh, Morgan Hill. Now going to tonight's lows. So for the lows for tonight, you're going to see mid-50s to low-50s, lowest being Dublin at 49, uh, and the highest being San Jose at 54. Tomorrow's highs. Now tomorrow's highs, eh, typically around the same weather. You're going to see low end 80s, uh, mid range 70s, San Francisco at 63, however. So uh, uh, if you're on the peninsula, put on a hoodie, my friends. Put on a hoodie. Now we're going to toss it to the uh, five day forecast. So for our five day forecast, you can see here uh, Thursday through Sunday, it's going to be pretty sunny. So put on those sunglasses. However, Monday, it's going to be kind of cloudy. Uh, highs being 85 inland and uh, the lows being 55 in the coastline. There you can see your five day forecast right here. Uh, Sunday looking like a pretty uh, chilly day, to be honest with you. All right, that's it for uh, this week's weather. Passing it back to Rebecca. Thanks, Armando. Looks like fall is really starting to hit. Bring on those sweaters. It's finally fall season and time to celebrate at our favorite pumpkin patches. More information will come after this short break. I was in foster care. I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. 
My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. To celebrate this the, this fall season, families could attend the Harvest Festival at the Ardenwood Historic Farm this last weekend. Here's Richard with the story. This past weekend, the Ardenwood Historic Farm hosted their annual Harvest Festival. There were multiple attractions that kids and parents can enjoy together. Going into the Patterson House takes you back to the 1850s and shows you what life was like for George and Claire Patterson and their kids. After exiting the house, there's a magic show people could attend, followed by a cider pressing display. The farm keeps buildings up from the past to preserve its history, and that can be seen through its performances, structures, and land. Though the Harvest Festival is over, the Ardenwood Historic Farm is open throughout the year, excluding holidays. Be sure to attend their next Harvest Festival in October of next year. For more information, head over to ebparks.org slash parks slash Ardenwood. Celebrating its 10th anniversary celebrations. It's a center that supports our community from the cradle to the retirement. There will, there, there will be live music, food, and over 30 information booths. Go check it out this Friday from 3 to, to 5.30 at 725 Whipple Avenue in Union City. The Don Edwards San Francisco Bay National Refuge hosted a huge celebration on Saturday to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the first and largest urban national wildlife refuge in America. This observance included speeches from guest speakers, face paintings, informational booths, and activities for the whole family. If you would like to visit the refuge or more events like this, you can visit fws.gov. Let's take a look at this week's sports with Johan. Thanks, Rebecca. The Ohlone women's soccer team has had an abysmal start to the season, to say the least. Before the Renegades matched up against City College yesterday, the Renegades are on a three-game losing streak. All three games resulted in the Renegades getting blown out and held scoreless. Now onto yesterday's matchup against San Francisco City College, and unfortunately, it was the same result. The Renegades got blown out 10 to nothing. Nothing went right for the Renegades on the 0-9 Ren Renegades. Ohlone went will look to achieve their first win against Kenyatta College this Friday. Now onto the Ohlone men's soccer team. The Renegades faced off against the Evergreen Hawks last Friday and lost to 3-0. They looked to rebound against Los Positas College yesterday. But the Renegades came up just short, losing 1-0 in a very close contest. Goalkeeper Diego Rojas had a total of eight saves in the frustrating loss. The Renegades are now 2-9-2 two, two for the season, and, they will, and their next match will be on the 21st versus Hartnell College, looking to get back on track for the season. Now on to women's water polo. The Renegades had a high-scoring, thrilling victory last week against Diablo Valley College with a score of 16-14. Mary Teo showed out and led the Renegades, scoring five goals unassisted. The Gracie Hunt and Brenda Pham also contributed immensely, scoring four goals each. The 2 and one Renegades will take on Marin College today to hope to start a winning streak. The Loney women's volleyball team had a doubleheader last Monday. In the first game against Los Mandados in a highly competitive and thrilling matchup, the Renegades came out victorious, winning three sets to two. Alina Kalpin and Gabby Richard both had 11 kills in the route to victory. But in the second game against West Hills College, things didn't go so well, losing three sets to one. The 5-16 and 16 Renegades will look to get back into the win column when they match up against San Mateo College on the 19th. A pretty tough week for Ohlone Sports overall, but hopefully next week they bounce back. And that's a wrap for sports this week. Back to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Johan. It's too bad about those sports teams at Ohlone. Hopefully they really start coming back. That's it for this week's news. Thank you so much from all of us here at the studio. Take care and we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful night.